Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm bringing you a more advanced tutorial. So please know that even though I'm really concentrating on my Learn Granime 2 series right now, I'm also still trying to bring you uh, more advanced tutorials or more advanced videos. And today is one of those days. Today I'm bringing you a Akai APC40 Mark 1 mapping with LED feedback. And this is absolutely amazing. Uh, now one thing you have to know before we dive into this is that it's a opinionated uh, layout system. So opinionated is something that uh, software developers use when they talk about frameworks. Uh, when these frameworks sort of, you know, have a, have a certain way of doing things or uh, sort of prescribe a certain way of doing things. And so this mapping was actually um, built with a certain way of you know, using it in um, in mind. So let me just show you what I got right here. Um, first of all, we have the HD um, layout and this is the first part of it. This uh, APC mapping was actually built for an HD touchscreen. And what we have here is actually uh, different playbacks. And you can see here that when I'm pressing these buttons and I'll point the camera to the controller in just a second, then what happens is that um, I have these different slots being loaded into the executors. And the trick here is that I have um, the APC40, I have like eight different faders down here. And um, the trick is that the rows um, and the columns of executor buttons up there are slots that you can load into the fader section. And um, you know what? Let me just show you what, what this layout is all about. All right, so this is gonna be slightly awkward. I don't know how to actually do this better, but here we have the touch screen. And over here, we have the controller. And what you can see here is that we already have the uh, three buttons, you know, highlighted that are loaded up here. So whenever I load one of these into the fader slots, then I can actually use it and you will see it in the tiny little MA3D display that there's something going on. Maybe let's just use another one. I think this is more pronounced, yeah. So you can see with the fader, I can actually toggle this on and off and What's also cool is that if I press this button down here, then that's actually the first executor button. If I go in and reassign these buttons over here to on and maybe this one to off, then you can see that um, it actually also works as you would expect it. So this is the executor button one, two, and then three. So if I go ahead and turn this off, you can see it's off. If I go ahead and press the second executor button, it turns on again. Now, one thing that's important, um, we mapped this button down here, um, you know, and colored it just so you have better visual reference uh, of, you know, which uh, slots you actually have loaded. And now let me just copy these slots over a little bit uh, to show you just multiple things being in these slots. Let's see, all right, maybe like that. Let's put another one right over here. And you will notice that right now, the LED feedback doesn't match what we see over here in the slot. So now what I wanna do is actually hit refresh LED. And now you can see it's all perfectly, um, you know, synced up. So let's load one up, works, perfect. And now what's really cool is that this is sort of stolen from Ableton Live. So these columns, you can always only load up one of these slots. So now if I press another slot right here, it will actually swap these out. And you can't really see it because I, I copied the same slot over um, into <laughs> these things. Um, but you know, you should be able to maybe tell by the, um, the desktop recording. So um, pressing the button once will show you which slot I have currently loaded in the executor down here. And then uh, if I press it again, it will be unloaded and it's orange again.
Now let's talk about this section right here. This is actually also really cool. Um, I think I can bring up this fader. Whoops, got nothing loaded, duh. All right, so these are really cool because you can actually go ahead and select a group um, and you can toggle it on and off. Right now it doesn't work because hey, we actually need to use this group section over here. So let me just select a group. Uh, let's do the Sharpies. I'm not sure if they're part of this sequence. Um, so now I have the Sharpie selected. You can see in the on the screen over here that it has a little red um, border around it. And now I should be able to actually change these colors. Nope, wrong example. So this is actually only working on LED. So if I actually load this one up, you can see it's all white. And now if I go ahead and press my color presets, uh, the colors actually switch. And that's really cool because you can actually turn on and off uh, groups, or in this case, you can turn on and off presets for different group selections. And I think that's a really nice feature. Moving over a little more to this section over here, you can see that um, you also have LED feedback in here. So um, you should be able to tell that these sections right over here in the desktop, they're actually empty right now. So if I go ahead and move this one over and hit refresh LEDs, then you can see over here, whoops, you can see over here that um, this Thing now is active, but the first uh, encoder that we just saw actually gets turned off. So nice LED feedback, and these are also really cool because the the top row up here, um, they're actually just faders that you can mess around with. Then this row down here is actually faders with an executor button, so I can go and flash or go um, stuff. Then these down here. All these buttons down here actually map to the first executor button. So this is really cool. If we look over here, well, that's actually, I'm gonna use the desktop recording for that, sorry. So if we look over here, what I have is, for example, group faders, or what's also really cool is that I have the blinders available right here. So I can just turn these on and off. Um, it's really quick access, I know exactly where I have my blinders and if I have a situation where, you know, something cool happens then bam, I just turn this way up. Uh, but it's also cool for things like um, here, for example, I have a hazer. So like that, um, you know, it's a, it's a sequence that's just constantly running that I wanna have on like uh, maybe full or different, different values. I don't know, kind of depends on what you wanna do with it. But I think this is really great. I've also seen quite a few people just use sequences to switch around presets. So that's perfect for that because over here you can actually set the, the dimmer value or the, the fader value if you need to, but then you can also just tap through different things. Now let's talk about um, a second here about how this works. So let me just bring up Bohm's MIDI translator. So obviously that's what we use in this one. By the way, who is we, you ask, that's a very good question. It's actually a friend of mine, Manuel and me, who created this um, nice little mapping in a joint effort. So thanks again for that, Manu. Um, couldn't have done it without you. So this is, uh, you know, your regular bone. And uh, yeah, you don't really need to understand all this. Just know that once you have everything set up, and this setup, by the way, you can find that in the video link below. Let me just put this camera back on track. So everything that you need to get this setup running for yourself is actually in a GitHub link down in the video description. Uh, you will find all of the macros, plugins, and scripts that you need, and also an extensive, um, you know, documentation on how 
to use this thing. Now it's really important. Um, I just wanted to show you how you set this up. So pretty much you connect your APC 40, um, then you start boom. I minimized it again. Come on. So you start a BOEM, you load the project file that's included in the GitHub repository, including, you know, in install instructions. So you load that one up. Um, the settings should be also in there, like the mapping. So uh, we have like one uh, virtual port going here between uh, the APC40 and BOEM. And then over in Granimate 2, all you want to do is go to Options. And then make sure that the MIDI in device is BOEM MIDI Translator 1 and MIDI out device is BOEM's MIDI Translator 2. And then what you want to do is actually press this button over here uh, and then it will actually reset your controller into MIDI mode. So like that, we can actually uh, take advantage of, of all these nice little um, buttons over here, which wouldn't be possible because regular mode is sort of uh, the able to live mode. And in that mode, these switch around, you can as easily set them up. So this is really important. Once you install, boom, you have the project file loaded, you have the MIDI port set up, then you need to press this shift button. And once you see this okay blinking, I mean, how cool is that, huh? Once you see that blinking, you know everything's all right. And then just go over to MA2 and tap on the refresh LED button. And you can see here, it even preserved all of your loaded slots. So this is the mapping. It's really pretty simple. I would say. So this is not really rocket science. Um, all you have is pretty much a bunch of executor buttons that you can load into eight different executors down here. And then you can go crazy, go nuts and play a really cool show. Now what I love about this is that um, just, you know, think about this for a second. What you have over here is five by eight slots that you have immediately available to play back at the touch of a button. So what you have here is a really concise and good overview of 40 executors that you can load up into these slots down here in like no time. This is so freaking cool. It's it's really blowing my mind what um, Manu and me came up with together. I, I love this. And then, you know, these presets over here, of course, this won't be all of your presets. This is more like a selection of presets that you can use to manipulate your uh, looks on the go. So let me find a good look here. Wait, why isn't this working? Come on. Come on, MA3D, not during my demo. All right, MA3D doesn't like me anymore. That's fine. That's cool. That happens. So, oh, you see what I did? By accident, turned down my group masters. Cool. So now it's going crazy. Thank you very much, people. Thanks. So let's see. Um, over here, what we can do is totally select our Sharpies and then uh, turn on this preset over here, which actually brings in a different gobo. I don't think you can see anything right now. I think that's wrong. You know, that what that that's what happens when you try to do a video just hours before you actually go to the airport to fly to the US for a two and a half week vacation. Yes, that's me. That's happening in a few hours. I love it. Oh, yeah. So here you can see, you know, it's just your presets are just a selection of really cool stuff that you can use. So now by just pressing this button, you can see the Sharpies kind of being really needlepoint or broad. And that's what I absolutely love about this um, setup. So go ahead, download this setup from the video description. Um, yeah, well, well, what else? I don't think that's... You know, there, there's so much more to say here. Um, this is a really cool setup, I think. You will have a lot of fun with this, and I'm so excited that I had to put out this really bad video to show you 
uh, because I couldn't I couldn't go to the States for two and a half weeks without having this out there. So go to the GitHub page, download the setup. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them down in the comments. And um, I wanted to say something else. What was it? Well, this is pretty much just a big plugin in a way that's that's making this possible. Um, I think overall this is really cool because it allows you to uh, actually practice at home. Uh, so so far I've found a really good solution for myself to program using the keyboard shortcuts, but this is really great for uh, just going nuts and kind of um, you know doing a live show right from your home computer. Ooh, I love that. So cool. All right, so here's the thing though. This is a uh, Mark I controller. And I know that a lot of you people have this controller as well. Um, I heard quite a few people saying that they prefer the Mark I over the Mark II uh, just because of the bigger buttons. But here's the thing. If you have a Mark II controller and you would love to see this ported to your controller because I'm honestly not sure if it works on a Mark II controller, here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to leave a link in the video description pointing you to my Amazon wish list where you will find the shiny new APC40 Mark II. Dude, if you want to have this for yourself and usually think about it. I'm a software developer full time um, in my uh, regular life and usually we people, we cost a lot of money. Now you can have your dream mapping for the price of just one of these controllers. Just go down there and buy me this one freaking controller and I'll be happy to port this for the controller. Just keep in mind, I'll make it available to everyone. Also, <laughs> if you think that this is the future of your live shows uh, with Granime 2 on PC, dude, just get me a freaking second one and I'll build you a dual APC40 Mark II controller setup. I promise. So. You know, it, it's worth a try. So I'm really putting my faith in you people uh, to be so generous to send a random guy talking about MA2 on YouTube, a brand new controller. Man, that would be so awesome. <laughs> All right, enough, enough with that crazy idea. So I apologize for this crappy video, but honestly, this is such a cool mapping. I had everything prepared, just not the video. I wanted to, you know, bring you this before I leave for the States. And that's pretty much it. Download the, the setup, uh, download the, the whole files from the video description and I'm off to the States in just a few hours to see my beautiful fiance and hang out at the Grand Canyon with her and do other really fun stuff. So uh, this is gonna be a fun vacation and when I come back, please God, Two new controllers in my inbox. Thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe. New stuff as soon as I'm back from the States. And I promise I'll bring on new um, advanced tutorial videos. All right. Enough of the talking. Talk to you soon. Please subscribe. God damn it. Bye.